Hello and welcome to another teaching by 119 Ministries. Our ministry teaches that the whole Bible is true and applicable for our lives today. If you would like to know more about what we believe and teach, please visit us at testeverything.net. We hope that you enjoy studying and testing the following teaching. One Nineteen Ministries does not have a Hebrew scholar on staff. Because of this, in this portion of this series, we must leverage the knowledge and studies of those who have mastered Hebrew to the degree necessary for the purposes of this teaching. In this teaching, we will begin to focus on some of the possible ways that yod heh could be pronounced, and also reveal some of the ways that yod heh cannot be pronounced. We would like to cite and credit the Ancient Hebrew Research Center for the information in Hebrew analysis contained in this teaching. We would encourage you to consider offering some support to their ministry if you feel led at ancient-hebrew.org. A top reason we have so many different pronunciations of yod heh is because many who invent said pronunciations do not know Hebrew. Just like any other existing language, the Hebrew language follows rules. There are rules of pronunciation and rules of grammar. In order to discern how yod heh is to be pronounced, we need to understand these rules. In Hebrew, syllables are broken up in rather specific ways, just as we see in the English language. There are two kinds of syllables, open and closed. Open syllables are a consonant and a vowel. Closed syllables are a consonant, vowel, consonant. The words he or she are open syllables. The words him and her are closed syllables. For a two-syllable word, English will usually place a closed syllable at the beginning of a word whenever possible, and an open syllable at the end of a word. For example, when we say this Hebrew word, many often say, Torah. However, in Hebrew, the closed syllable comes at the end, so it is actually pronounced Torah. Also note that most vowels are not written in Hebrew, but are implied. Hebrew is normally broken up as consonant vowel and consonant vowel consonant. An example is this Hebrew word, halach, meaning walk. A Hebrew word with four letters will often be broken up in two ways. The first is consonant, vowel, consonant, and consonant, vowel, consonant. An example of this is the Hebrew word midbar, meaning desert. The second way is consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel, and consonant, vowel, consonant. An example of this would be be, de, rech, meaning in the road. The Hebrew letters yod and wa, or vav in modern Hebrew, may function as a vowel or a consonant, much like the English letter y. The letter y can act as a consonant in the word yellow, or a vowel in the word y. Depending on where the yod or wa is located in relation to the syllables, will determine whether it is going to be used as a vowel or a consonant. If the yod or wa is at the beginning of a syllable, it will take the consonant sound. But if it is in the middle or the end of a syllable, it will take a vowel sound. Here are some examples. Mote, meaning death. Notice that the wa is in the middle of the consonant, so it is a vowel. Torah, meaning teachings, instructions or law, has the wa at the end of the syllable, so it is also a vowel. Mitzvot, meaning commandment. Here the wa is at the beginning of the syllable, so it is a consonant. Din is the word for judge. The yod is in the middle of the syllable, so it is a vowel. Yawan, which is the Hebrew word for the land of Greece, Yod and Wa are consonants because they appear at the beginning of each syllable. Yado, 
means his hand. The yod is a consonant because it is at the beginning of a syllable, and the wa is a vowel because it is at the end of a syllable. At this point, it is possible to clear up a common misconception pertaining to the pronunciation of yod heh wah heh in relation to the Hebrew name Yehuda, which is transliterated to Judah in English. Many have noticed that the Hebrew letters in Yehuda and yod heh wah heh are identical, with the exception of the Hebrew letter Dalit, or the D in English. Notice how Yehuda clearly follows the Hebrew rules of pronunciation, Yehuda. The wa, u, is at the end of the syllable, so it is a vowel, and the word ends with a closed syllable. However, when we remove the D, everything changes, Yehuah. Now we have three open syllables and no closed syllables. To correct this according to the rules of Hebrew, the wa must move from the end of the second syllable to the beginning of the last syllable. And since the wa is now at the beginning of the syllable, it must take the consonant form of wa. Now we have a consonant in the middle without a vowel, which is also not possible, so the h must move to the end of the first syllable. This does not suggest that yewa is how yod he wah he would be pronounced, because there is more to consider regarding how Hebrew names work. All we can prove so far is the pronunciation cannot be yehua. All Hebrew names are Hebrew words. Take Adam, for example. Adam means man. Noach means comfort, and Hawa, or Eve, means living. All of these names come from Hebrew words that are nouns. However, some Hebrew names are verbs. Yahakov is Yahakov. Notice here that the Yod is at the beginning of the syllable and is a consonant, and the Wa is in the middle of the syllable and therefore a vowel. This is a verb meaning he grabs the heel. Some names can be multiple verbs or nouns. The name Yishmael or Ishmael is the verb Yishma. The Yi at the beginning of the verb means he. The verb Shma means hears. Together, this means he hears. The L at the end of the name literally means mighty one or often translated as God in English. Putting the verb and noun together, we have God hears. Now that these rules have been established, we can apply such to yod heh wah heh yod heh wah heh can be broken down a couple ways to what we have looked at earlier. The V represents a vowel. The yod and the wall are both at the beginning of the syllables and will therefore function as consonants. So further analysis requires knowing what noun or verb consists of yod heh wah heh The only option available is the word hawa, meaning to exist. The prefix of yod carries the meaning of he. So yod heh wah heh means he exists. Now we need to determine the vowels that go into the word. yod heh wah heh as a verb, is never used in the Tanakh. There exists a closely related word, yod heh yod heh which conveniently also means, he exists. It is found many times in the Tanakh. One example is in Genesis chapter 1, verse 29, where it is pronounced, yihye. Genesis 1, 29. And God said, Behold, I have, yihye, given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. If we use those vowels in yod heh we then have yi While the positions of the vowels are mostly defined by the rules of pronunciation, there are exceptions to which vowels are used. Therefore, it is entirely possible that yod heh may have different vowels. Some possible pronunciations are Yehwah, Yahweh, Yihweh, Yahawah, Yahweh, 
Yehovah, and many more possibilities. Because Yahweh has the most evidence, and because it is a well-accepted scholarly position, 119 Ministries has adopted Yahweh as a possible, if not most likely, pronunciation of yod heh We revealed some of the reasoning in Part 2 of this series, if you have not watched it already. While the pronunciation of Yehweh is a possibility and founded on the verb used in his name, most already understand that Yah is likely the first syllable of our Creator's name. For example, the Hebrew word Hallelujah generally means praise Yah. The shortened form of yod heh as Yah is used about 50 times in the Tanakh, first occurring in a song in Exodus 15.2. The names Jeremiah, Elijah, and Isaiah all contain Yah as a component of their name, relating back to the name of our Creator. So while the pronunciation of Yehweh may have served as a logical derivative of the verb that yod heh is based on, if the first syllable of Ye is replaced with the first syllable of his name as Yah, then what do we have? Yehweh becomes Yahweh. By simply using a combination of a form of the verb Yehweh along with Yah as the first syllable of his name given to us in multiple ways through multiple witnesses in the Tanakh, we generate Yahweh. This is significant because as covered in part two of this series, the pronunciation Yahweh agrees with Josephus and other Greek transliterations of the pronunciation of his name which is evidence that is over 2,000 years old. Whether the pronunciation of Yahweh is right or wrong, we do not know. It is not possible to know for certain. All we know is that no one can claim to know with 100% confidence either. There exist many educated guesses, such as Yehovah or Yehovah as other popular educated guesses, which we will discuss later in this series. Regardless, Yahweh appears to have the most evidence, and going with the most evidence is the best that one can do on this subject. These are just educated guesses based on facts we know about the Hebrew language, and all of this holds up as long as the rules for the Hebrew language have been consistent throughout the language. The only way to know the pronunciation for certain is if we actually had a recording during the time of Moses, which, of course, is not going to ever happen. The only other answer to this dilemma is to wait for the return of Yeshua our Messiah, as he is certainly well equipped to sort this out for us. This leads us back to some of the material we covered in the first teaching of the Hashem series. Exodus chapter 9 verse 16. That my name, Shem, may be declared throughout all the earth. Some take this verse to mean that we should be correcting and rebuking others on how to pronounce yod heh based on our own understanding. However, as we illustrated, short of having an audio recording of Moses, no one can speak with 100% confidence as to most valid pronunciation. More importantly, the Hebrew word Shem, translated as name in Exodus 9.16, does not mean what many assume it means. Shem is the root of neshema, meaning breath. In ancient Hebrew, our breath is more than just the air in our lungs. It is our character. It is what makes you, you. This is why Hebrew names are also words. These words are often reflected in the character of that individual. To further illustrate this, let's read Numbers 6, 24 through 26. Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yahweh make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Let Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. These are all characteristics of Yahweh. They are the Shem of Yahweh. Now let's read the next verse, keeping character in mind. Verse 27. So shall they put my name, character, upon the people of Israel, and I will bless them. By Yahweh meaning he exists. Yahweh is simply stating in Exodus 9.16 that there will be a day in which all will know that he exists, that his authority and character, or Shem, will be known by all. 
Exodus 9.16 has nothing to do with the pronunciation of his name. Yet, even if someone wanted to make Exodus 9.16 all about the pronunciation, it must be realized that such is reserved for a future time, in which our Messiah Yeshua will make obsolete all these pronunciation debates void and worthless. It is not currently possible to know for certain the true pronunciation. So when some adamantly correct and rebuke others about the pronunciation of yod heh or to us, Yahweh, even to the point of making it a salvational issue, is it the character that is being taught? Is that individual creating unity in the body or creating chaos? Just something to consider. We pray that this teaching has blessed you. And remember, continue to test everything. Shalom. It is because of you, our generous supporters, who make it possible to offer these high-quality teachings completely free of charge. If you feel led to support 119 Ministries so that we can continue this effort, please visit testeverything.net and click on the Support 119 tab. Learn how you can partner with us to take the whole Word of God to the nations.